Hey everybody, Dave here. How are you all doing tonight, tomorrow, yesterday afternoon, the second Thursday of three weeks ago? And uh, it's that time again, Syndicated Pipe Club, once again, in your ears and on your screens if you're watching on YouTube. Oh, I do have to apologize. We've been talking about talking about Avatar for weeks now, and we're going to talk about talking about Avatar some more because I still haven't watched the next episode. Because life... Anyway, as always, I have Greg, the Badger Piper, where you're with me. How are you doing tonight, Greg? Greetings. Uh, a good evening to you. Uh, doing well over here. Just uh, thankful to get out of the house for a moment. With, uh, after all the craziness of today. Of, uh, uh, it's been just a very busy day since uh, this morning when my son woke me up early. Yeah, I've had those days too. And Sunday was one of those days. Yeah, he's usually like really good, but um, you know, he he woke up and he really needed a a diaper change. And and normally, like he'll he'll wake up some mornings and he'll cry a little bit, but it's because he's kind of like searching for his water bottle in his crib. Right. Uh, but right. this one, like he like woke up and just uh, stayed very still and just kind of let out this like very mournful cry and uh that's when i realized that oh you know this something was different with this one so i think i was able to sleep go back to sleep for a while after that but uh it was still a big enough disruption that's just kind of throwing my whole day off yeah i can see where that would be a certainly a big problem us parents don't get enough sleep as it is, and when you're getting less sleep than you normally do, it just doesn't make anything work right after you're done. That's for sure. Right. So, what are you smoking tonight, Greg? Tonight, I am smoking uh, Kramer's Blend for Danny K, which is a, a nice uh, uh, aromatic English. In uh, my Stanwell's... Uh, brushed brown uh, pipe with a paneled stem. The bowl is regular, but, uh, you know, c- you know, cylinder shape, but, but uh, the stem has a uh, nice uh, panel shape to it for sitting. Excellent. How about you? Me, I'm smoking my Morgan Bones Bent Billiard. And in it, I am smoking some thing. Where is it? I put it away, I think. Now I can't remember now I can't remember what I was. Hold on. I'm so smoking some independence from Missouri Mirsham. Very nice. It is a good English blend. I'm glad I found it. And and by my I found it, I believe somebody sent it to me. I'm not exactly sure who. I think it was a Secret Santa a couple of years ago. Oh, nice. So every once in a while, when I'm feeling patriotic for some other place in, in the world, like, you know, next door, I uh, break it out and smoke some independence. Yes. Uh, well, I, I hear you on that. No, even no matter what, even no matter what, however I feel about uh, things, I still love uh, you know the the basic uh, ideals of, of my country and everything. So uh, I I hear you on that. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure you do. I mean, it's it's not like <laughs> it's really just to just to quickly get the political tickle jabs in. It's really not like your country's that much different from ours anymore because Biden and Trudeau are basically singing off the same song sheet. Uh, everyone that's basically in support of the Great Reset just needs to go away. Well, honestly, from uh, what I've been reading, Trudeau will be going away. See, he didn't win a majority government over here the last time he called a snap election, which was just a month or so ago. And typically when something like that happens, the leader who made that stupid mistake gets to go away. He will no longer be the leader. He's won two minorities in a row, and he called one thinking he was going to 
to win and be the power for four years. And, well, he was wrong. They still won, but they still have to work with everybody. So, right, really, I've said this before to people, and I will say it again. In Canada, a minority government is what you want because you can't just walk everything that you, your, the party in power, wants through. It's the right. best. It's the best situation for our fractured political system. Right, and for me too. Like I, you know, like I, I lean conservative, but uh, I know bad things happen when one power, one, uh, one side has too much power, and there's nothing to, to check that. And uh, and so, like I, I don't want my uh, you know party to have like absolutely everything, but uh, you know, it's. Uh, yeah, uh, so I, I do believe like it, it's. I may not always like to hear the other side, but I think it is uh, an important because it's a good check on yourself. Oh yeah, it's absolutely necessary. There's just no way around it. You need the checks and you need the balances. And if you get the party that is not doing their checks and balances properly, that's when you start getting trouble. That's right. All right, so we've, we've been discussing what to discuss this episode, and that's why we went briefly into politics, not like the political episode that aired not that long ago. Yeah, which, by the way, if you don't agree with us, that's okay. Absolutely. You know, like, uh, you know, feel free to, you know, kind of fast forward through that stuff if you don't care for it or anything, but... Uh, and in, in, the case of, in, the, in the case of the episode entitled, Uh-Oh, Here Comes the Politics, just skip that one. Yeah, no, absolutely, and... Uh, Hey, you know, like, and if you don't disagree, if you don't agree with us, you know, that we, we uh, don't think any differently of you. So That's I, right. I just want, I know things are very uh, hot tempered right now with everybody, but, uh, you know, certainly I have my feelings and opinions, but I never use that. Uh, I try my best not to make that judge who is worthy of uh you know my friendship or whatever like i I may get frustrated sometimes but uh you know in the end if you're a good person you know i i appreciate that and i try to find uh you know what common ground we do have absolutely okay um so yeah (laughs) this could end up being one of our shorter episodes like I'm already looking at the time going, hmm, we're only seven minutes in, and I'm already out of ideas. So where can they find us on social media? Oh, you can find us anywhere in the links below, (laughs) uh, because I'm not repeating them. (laughs) Well, I think we might just take another foray into TNT, because that's really what we have most on the go and most concentrated on for the both of us over the last couple of weeks. Yes. I guess uh, maybe my question is, uh, when you were making your characters, were you, um, did you take any aspects of yourself and put them into your characters, or did you completely just do uh, something different? I rolled everything. It's all random. Even the personality traits were generated online by a, by a character generator. I did absolutely nothing of myself. So not even just like in their general personality or anything like from day to day or whatever. Like, uh, no, I, don't, I, I don't know. I am a horrible role player. Hmm. Gotcha. So it's one of those things. If you want to find out about the character, you can uh, you can read about him and his brother and the adventures we have as I write the story of them. Nice. I've been waiting on some background for a couple of characters that are already in the party, but the lady who created those characters hasn't gotten back to me with it yet, so I'm kind of gotcha. stuck. Gotcha. But if she doesn't get to me by the end of the week, I'll ask her uh, at our next at our next uh, game, and if she's got nothing, I'll just wing it. Cool, cool. Yeah, I have to... I had to think of a backstory, I guess, for my wife uh, and her character. Oh, 
she's always wanted to play and uh, like we've uh there's a youtuber that i watch uh that's really funny um by the name of puffin forest and he is a uh dungeon and dragons player slash a dungeon master and he's mm -hmm. but he animates like some of the like stories that he's uh, dm'd or played and uh this stuff is pretty funny like uh you know they're uh not like the most well-made animation but uh, like they're good enough that uh you know they're amusing and everything and it's a solid channel to fo follow and everything but uh i introduced her to that and uh <laughs> some of the stories that I've heard about uh, with D&D and, and played some for her. And it, eventually it's kind of like got her interest and uh, into thinking like, oh, I want to do that. You know, I want to give it a try at least. Good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah. So just to, to fill, fill you, the listeners in, and yes, we're definitely veering from the, from the pipe and the TV to this, this week and concentrating nothing on nothing but because, well, D and D, you can watch it live, but it is just a bunch of people sitting around a table with pieces of paper rolling dice. That, that that's about all the action you actually see. It's all in the mind. Yes. So you have to imagine me tapping with my with my temple with the uh, the stem of my pipe because that's what I'm doing when I say it's all in the mind. But yeah, I've created uh, two half-elf characters, brothers, Darwin and Halamath Evenwood. I'm thinking Hal is probably going to go away soon. Just because with the addition of yourself and your wife to the, to the party, and we've got another guy joining same day as you this coming Sunday. So we are going to have like one, two, three, four players with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven characters. So I might send him home, just to you know, um, just to make the uh, make the the party the turns not take so long. Well, here's an idea. Why don't you ask? Uh, you know, we don't necessarily have to kill him, but you could maybe ask Bruce to uh, maybe by the end of the the next session have something happen to him that becomes uh, like this, like a possible kind of like um, story beat for us to try to eventually save him from something well I could do that but I already know that Bruce has got the first four or five campaigns already planned out mm. so I don't think I want to I, I don't want to keep him around too long I'm holding him off one one more week because I just want to see what the dynamic is with the with the group right we may need another fighter but you're coming in as a paladin We've already got a dwarf fighter. We've got uh, a human ranger. We've got a cleric coming in. My my wizard's probably going to be uh, dual class, multi classing as a druid as well, which gives him some fighting ability. So we're going to be we're going to be fairly well rounded as with fighters. I don't think I need to play to. True. But I don't want to kill him off or get him injured in such a way that. He uh, can't come back later on as a different character or, or a character down the road. It's, you know, we, we bump him up to wherever the levels of the group are. And, you know, because maybe he went off warring or something when he get, went home. You, you know, he's a barbarian. He might just say, ah, I'm going to go over here and see what's going on. He might come back to us a level 14 uh, barbarian. You never know. But I want the option available to bring the character back if we need him. Right. Okay. So yeah, that's uh, that's what I've been I've been doing, and I've been kind of kind of writing down the story, you know, fictionalizing the fiction that we created uh, for the first campaign. I've got my notebook right here with all the uh, the events in it. Most people wouldn't understand it because you actually have had to have been there to get those notes. Mm. But, uh, yeah, it, it was a fun time. Cool. Yeah, I, I'm excited. I've never I've never played it, so... But, but I've played plenty of RPGs that, uh, you know, their core 
groundwork is uh, pretty much the same. So. It's just that uh, most of the games that I play, the characters are already kind of pre-made and pre-set, like Final Fantasy or Dragon Quest. Um, or is this one, it's more Western RPGs, it's more you create your character. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I've i only played Western RPGs. I played a couple when I was younger, like about 20, 25 years ago. And, and you know, the mechanics are, are the same. We're using the same polyhedral dice set. You you got a lot of the same skills and whatnot crossing over from game to game. It also helps that, you know, Wizards of the Coast made the other games too. <laughs> so that helps. But yeah, it was a fun time and yeah, it was just opportunity knocked and Bruce wanted to start a game. So I figured, ah, I haven't done it in years. Let's get back into it. See see if it's any more or less fun than it was before and it's not bad so far I, I, I do think you know it will depend on the group you get together or something like this yeah for me I think it's going to be uh, definitely different the, the first time I play it because when, you, when you're playing a, an RPG on a, like a video game <laughs> it's basically you, you run around and smash things and uh, whereas with uh, the actual D&D there's a lot more of just uh, like attacking the enemy isn't always the best uh, uh, solution. Yeah, it's not always the way necessarily the right way to go. That's true. Yeah, so it's been uh, it's definitely made me kind of you know take a pause and, and think about like my character and everything and what. Uh, oath I want him to take. Yeah, I th- I think if I if I go with this uh, idea I have about multi-classing a uh, druid wizard, I'm just going to get the druid up to level 2 to match where I'm at in the wizard wizard class and and you know pick my wild shape, pick uh, I think I have to add, in level 2 also pick the, uh, the the class of the druid, you know, yeah. whether it be land, moon, star, space, ice, smoke, spore. Yeah, that one. I, I was gonna get to it. I think. Yeah. Being, uh, I've one of the things that uh, like once I because uh, I, all I knew were the just general kind of classes of D and I didn't realize that there were like subclasses and that oh, yeah. really uh that really got me interested uh in in that because they definitely add a lot of flavor to uh, to your character and uh, the wizard like i i thought there was a lot of really good uh, options there too of uh cool things that you could play as like i always uh one of these days i'd love to play a wizard that's all like illusion based uh because that would be a lot of fun yeah, and there is a there is a subclass of wizard for that. Um, there is practically a subclass of wizard for any playstyle, from what I've been reading since I picked a wizard. Um, but I am by far no expert. I mean, I, and, and as far as D and D goes, I literally have one game on you from two yeah. weeks ago. I think that's it. But yeah, I think it'll be fun because I've got this idea because we got to bring you and your wife and the other guy in, into the game. I think I've got it. I'm going to talk to Bruce about this. Um, <clears throat> but I, what I'm going to ask him is if we can have had my wizard disappear for a couple of weeks. Where his brother comes look, comes comes to the current group and goes, Hey, have you guys seen Darwin anywhere? He he disappeared shortly after, uh, after the... Uh, after we got back from protecting the caravan. And I'm going to see if I can get Bruce to send them looking for Darwin. Hmm. And it's not going to take long, you know, like a turn maybe. But he's going to come back. And he's going to... I want him to bring in the three of you. Because he met you on the road, right? Mm-hmm. Well, 
the challenge is, well, um, my wife is actually, she's not going to be there um, this Sunday because she's actually flying to Las Vegas mm. uh, for a work trip. Uh, so uh, that does uh, complicate things, but depending on what she plays as, like, uh, you know, if I if she plays as a rogue, uh, you know, we can always have uh, somebody sneaking around uh, and pop in. Um, but, uh, you know, at least with, uh, with my character, uh, that should fit and with uh, this other guy's character. Okay, yeah. Uh, well, I can bring the two of you in that way then. That's no problem. We'll figure yeah. out a way to get your wife into the story when she's available next. Yeah, no, I, I think I don't think it should be too too difficult. Okay. Well, I actually am going to call it here. Um, just because I have had a heck of a time this last week with a phlegmy cough. And it's nothing new. It's the cough I had from when I got sick almost a month ago. It's mm-hmm. just not letting go. And I've had to turn the mic off a couple of times just so I can clear my throat. So, just to, just to say, hey... Hopefully by next week, you guys can have a nice clean episode where we can talk about the Avatar and not talk about not the Avatar. You know, not talking about... We're not going to talk about talking about the Avatar. We're actually going to talk about Avatar. There you go. Yes. Say say that five times fast. I couldn't say it once, almost. Yeah. All right, but anyway... If you want to follow us throughout the week, of course, you can find me on Twitter at DrAlien201 and various other places that will be in the link tree that is left down below for you to click on. Greg, where can the people find you? You can find me at the underscore Badger Piper on Twitter and on Instagram. I am the Badger Piper. And, and of course, uh, you can always email us at the reverse flash time at gmail.com email that nobody ever, ever emails us at. And you can also comment on our YouTube page, uh, video, uh, you know, smash that like button, uh, leave us a review on uh, iTunes and all that stuff, you know, as long as it's a good review uh, and, and whatnot. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it'll be appreciated. And, we, and if you've already done stuff like that, thank you. We appreciate you for doing that. Yes, we, we really, really do. And um, just if you have done that and you're wondering why we haven't actually shouted you out for leaving said review, it's because I'm in Canada and I can't access American iTunes. So the majority of the people who listen to us are from the U.S. I can't see if anyone's left a review. So I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, I know what I'm doing after this episode. <laughs> I had not meant to pigeonhole you into that, but I kind of did, didn't I? <laughs> oh, well. All right. Well, everybody, as always, we're wishing you good smokes, great entertainment, and we will see you next week. Chat with you later. Chat with you later.